welcome back to our class. And uh, class, if you could just welcome our visitor. Just hello, hello visitor. OK, there. You see how welcoming we are? We are, we we are delighted to have you here. Uh, but here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to begin an inquiry into why all of this is happening, why it is that income and wealth and to some extent political power are becoming more unequal. What is it that's going on? Who is to, I hate to, word, to use the, the, the expression blame, it's not a matter of blame, but what is the actually central cause? Are you with me? Are you interested? I hope so, because if you're not, they are. <laughs> uh, and uh, and let's, uh, let's, let's examine something. The, the way, uh, probably the best way to begin, uh, because you remember last week we talked about your values, about uh, really the kind of inequality you thought was appropriate or what you expected the inequality was and the gap between reality and ideal and you participated as well. You also voted about what you wanted, and we found out that it turns out there was a huge gap between the degree of inequality of wealth actually in the United States and what people thought it was, and also the ideal that people had in their heads. And it wasn't just Berkeley, and it wasn't just all of you, but it really was a random sample of people around the country. So we're going to take another cut at all of this, but, the, but what we're going to do now is beginning, we're just beginning our inquiry into why all this has happened. And I'd like you, we're going to just do a couple of, a couple of clicker votes, and you don't have clickers, but you, we're going to figure out a way, I think we've already figured out a way of making sure you are involved as well. Uh, I've got two questions. Now before you, before you vote on this, let me explain why. This is a, this is a matter of mapping some of your values. And the first question that I'm asking you is how important is it to you to preserve neighborhoods with small shops and bookstores? And this is just in terms of, in terms of the kind of environment you want. I mean, is it very important? Uh, and the two choices here, quite important or not really important at all. Uh, and, uh, and what do you think? Let's go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let's end it there and let's just see what you think in terms of importance. Uh, well, 82% of you, 82% of you, 605 of you, uh, say it is quite important. Uh, preserving neighborhoods with small shops and businesses and uh, about 18% of you, 129, you say it's, it's really not important at all. Well, that's, that's pretty, in, I mean, that's significant. And you do it as well. I don't know whether you feel the same way, but I, we'll see. We'll see on the basis of what you believe. Now, let me ask you another question. And this is, again, mapping your preferences. Where that's all we're doing now is mapping your preferences. And the second question has to do with steady jobs and good wages. How important is it to maintain steady jobs and good wages for American, and I just selected some workers, retail workers, manufacturing workers, airline workers. How important is it to you to maintain steady jobs and good wages for, for a bunch of, a lot of American workers? Uh, is it quite important, A, or not really important at all, B? And let's go. One, two, three, and you, you participate as well. I mean, I'm assuming that you are going to be part of this poll. And let's end the bidding there, and let's just see where you are. So 94% of you say it, it's quite important, quite important, 94% of you uh, to maintain steady jobs and good wages for uh, these retail workers, manufacturing workers, and other workers. And only 42 of you, 6%, don't care. I don't know who you are, <laughs> but you cold-hearted people, I don't. <laughs> well, all right, uh, that's interesting. So we have, we have a little bit of mapping. I could have asked you a number of questions, but we've got a little bit of a mapping going. Uh, but now I want to ask you a different 
question. <laughs> now, when, I, I want to explain this. I just want to ask you, I just want to ask you, I, I'm not trying to make you feel bad about yourself. I just want to ask you, do you shop online for a lot of things? All right? Just a question. Go. And you, are, are, do you shop online? I just want to know from you, do, are you shopping online for a lot of things? Okay, let's end the bidding there. End the bidding there and let's just see. So, three quarters of you uh, do a lot of shopping online. And about a quarter of you don't. I, 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 what I'm going to ask you, and this is, I don't mean to make you feel bad about yourself. Do you see a slight inconsistency? <laughs> in other words, uh, you, you really, most of you really value small shops and you value bookstores and, and you value jobs and good jobs and that's what you said, but you're also shopping a lot online and the, the inconsistency that I want to point out, in case you are missing it, is that buying a lot of things online, while I understand it completely, and I do it too, you are perhaps having an effect on small shops and bookstores. Are you not? I say this, I, in part, I have a personal interest because I write books. And when I started writing books, you know, in the 20th century, <laughs> um, there were a lot of bookstores. I, uh, most of my books were sold in bookstores, and now most of my books are sold, uh, I guess, through Amazon. I mean, the, you know, the three dozen books I sell are th <laughs> sold through Amazon. My books, by the way, I, I have to tell you a, a little bit of a story. I went to a... Uh, a, a social event at somebody's house that I, I didn't know, I didn't know this person, uh, about a year and a half ago. And on this person's bookshelf was the first book that I had ever written. Uh, and it was not even in paperback, it was a hardback version. I was, I was so, I was so touched and I was so honored and so, well, I just thought, wow, I mean, I don't even know this person, and they have my first book on their bookshelf. And I went to the host of this event and said, I noticed that you have my, my first book on your bookshelf. And he looked a little abashed, a little embarrassed. And, I, and I, I, he said, you ought to pull it out and open it. And I pulled out my book, and I opened it, and it had been hollowed out. <laughs> You see, he had bought it as a safekeeping device <laughs> because I put to put jewelry and other things in on the supposition that nobody would ever pull that book out. <laughs> anyway, anyway, the point is that I have a very soft place in my heart for bookstores and you do too, and you like bookstores, and also all of the other things in your neighborhood, but if you're shopping online, there's a little bit of a, there's a, little bit of a, con of, of a contradiction in your heads. Let me ask you another question, uh, and, uh, and again, just an honest answer, all right? Just really honest answer. Uh, this is, uh, do you seek the lowest price goods and services, such as clothing, flights? Do you, are you... In other words, are you looking out for the best deals you can possibly get? Is this important to you? Uh, yes or uh, of course, or no. Let's go. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let's end the bidding, end the bidding there. So 87% uh, of you are seeking the best deal you can, the lowest price goods you possibly can. Of course you are. Uh, and, uh, and only 13% of you uh, are not. I don't know what planet you live on, but, <laughs> but you are not. I mean, and I don't mean to in any way denigrate you. I, I think most, most of us, though, do look for the best deals. But again, I want to suggest to you 
that in getting the best deal, you might be encouraging the companies that are selling you the best deal to outsource abroad or to reduce their wages or to bust unions or to maybe cut wages or maybe lay people off and bring in machinery to do. In other words, there are a lot of things companies can do to give you great deals. But a lot of what they do to give you great deals are inconsistent or at least slightly in tension with what you profess to be your ideals about jobs and wages. Do you see that tension? I, I, I don't want to, I'm not suggesting that you are in any way hypocritical here. I just, I'm suggesting that there is an important tension between how you profess or what you profess to believe in in terms of shops and bookstores and good wages and good jobs and steady jobs and the way you actually behave as consumers. Now you may also have a similar tension. Again, I'm not suggesting you're hypocritical, but but I want you also to think about that tension in terms of your behavior as a consumer versus your professed values. Because in many ways, in many ways, there is a split brain in our heads. If we can just, there we are, there's your brain. Because part of our brains, we are, we are I, uh, to, for, for a, way, a shortcut way of saying it, is we have, a, we have a citizen side of our brain. That is, the citizen side of our brain, we are concerned about things like the quality of life in our communities and bookstores and, and, and everything uh, and quality of, of, you know, the other people's jobs. And, and we, 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 have, we have sort of values as citizens in terms of the kind of place we would like to live. But then we also have another part of our brains that let's call the consumer part of our brains. And I want to suggest to you that there is some tension between the citizen part of our brains and the consumer part of our brains. Now, I'm not a neurologist. I I don't know where these brain centers are but they don't necessarily overlap. And so when we get to the question of who is actually driving inequality, poor jobs, insecure jobs, the closing of bookstores, neighborhoods that are actually becoming backwaters, when we ask what is happening and who is doing it all, You and you are complicit. Again, I'm not blaming you. I'm just, I, I'm just trying to point out that you are complicit. When we're, we're inquiring into the sources of widening inequality, job insecurity, and everything else, you are complicit. We could have done this about the environment, too. Uh, a lot of us, a lot of you, I imagine, want a healthy environment, clean air, good water, and everything else. Uh, but maybe you don't want to pay for, or maybe in seeking the best deals, you are creating incentives for companies not to voluntarily be terrific citizens with regard to the environment. You get the drift of what I'm saying. You understand what I'm saying. So uh, the question that I want to close on, or I want you to think about, is why is it that the consumer side of our brains wins out so often over the citizen side of our brains? Doesn't always, but why does it so often win out? Well, I want to offer to you and to you three possible reasons. 
One possible reason is that you have limited resources. I mean, all of us have limited resources. We would like to be better. We would like to be more conscientious. We would like to be better people. But we've got to get the best deal we can, we feel, because we don't have endless amounts of money. Maybe you do. No, you don't. <laughs> and so we have limited resources. But there is something else. There's something else going on as well. And part of it is that we don't connect our pursuit of good deals with consequences that we may dislike. That is, what I said to you before, you know, you're trying to get the best deal, you are driving competition among companies to get you the best deal, and that is driving companies to slash wages or outsource abroad or bring in automated equipment and digital equipment instead of jobs uh, or doing all kinds of things or, or maybe uh, doing, it, doing stuff over the internet, selling over the internet rather than setting up a shop. Whatever it is, you are driving companies to do this, but you may not see the link. You and many other people may not see that causation. Maybe if you did, you would behave differently. And maybe some of you, even today, maybe some of you only will buy a garment that is certified as not being sewn in a sweatshop by children in a developing nation who are not going to school because they are working seven days a week in a sweatshop. And maybe you are looking for that certification. Maybe you are willing to pay more for that kind of a garment, that kind of a certification, than you would pay otherwise. But surveys show that most people are not willing to pay more. They like that certification, for example, but they're really not willing to pay that much more. So you may not know, but even if you did know, maybe you wouldn't take dramatically different action than you're taking now, but there's something else, and that is that you're not prepared to sacrifice good deals for the sake of better consequences because you don't believe anybody else will. Now this is a collective action problem. Do you, know what, do you understand what I'm, what I'm talking about when I say collective action problem? I mean that people will behave differently if they think everybody else is doing the same or making the same sacrifices or behaving the same way than they would if they don't really trust that other people are going to make the sacrifices because they say to themselves, why should I sacrifice? Why should I be the one who is going to not get the garment or not buy the book on, uh, on the internet when I think everybody else is going to do it. I'm not going to really affect any change. I'm not going to really affect the economy or politics if, I just, if it's just me. So there is this, number three, let's call it a collective action problem. You can be sure, you cannot be sure that other people are doing the same thing, sacrificing the same way. Now the point of all of this is to say, number one, that some of this can be overcome. I mean, if you really are worried about good jobs and steady jobs and small stores and bookstores and all of the other things in your society, in your environment that you don't want to sacrifice, you really are worried about it, well, maybe on number two, there could be more widespread understanding, uh, more public education, more understanding of the connectedness between what people do in their private purchases, getting the best deals, and these kinds of consequences. Maybe we could just have a lot of publicity. But what do we do about three? Well, three, that is the collective action problem where you're not going to do it if you don't know everybody else will do it, maybe you could overcome that by having laws. In fact, that's what laws do in many cases. Like zoning laws, they say you can't have a big box retailer here. This area is reserved for family-owned businesses, for example. 
And later on in the term, we're going to look at laws and regulations as ways of overcoming number three, this kind of collective action problem. But maybe there's also something else going on here. And it has to do with economic change. Maybe, just maybe, one way of better synchronizing the consumer part of your brain with the citizen part of your brain is to have policies that make it easier for people to move from job to job. Maybe we need policies that make it easier for people in industries that are getting rapidly automated or digitized uh, to get other good jobs where there is not that phenomenon. Maybe we need policies that help people get the kind of opportunities they need so that we are achieving both good deals and also other citizen objectives. Maybe we need to subsidize small family-owned businesses to some extent if we want them. Do you get my drift? And one of the things we are going to be talking about later on in the semester, and keep an eye on now, is what kind of policies those might be. For now, just wanted to pla plant a flag for you and for you that there is a tension here. And when we start addressing the question of why widening inequality, what's going on, who's responsible, you need to understand that part of the responsibility is yours and yours. See you next week. <laughs>